Cheers, everybody. Welcome to a uh, another episode of the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones, and uh, just pouring a little Oktoberfest here. It's it's been a while since I've had my uh, signature German beers on the channel, so figured why not do it today because we're doing something really fun, really interesting. Uh, bear with me here for a moment. Perfect. Perfect. It's just a class above the rest. Um, anyway, so recently I posted up a picture of these. And they've been getting a lot of attention. A lot of you want to know how to do this. And I hate to disappoint you, but it's super easy. There's like no big magic trick here. Um, so we're going to show you how to do this. It's, it's really, really cool. It's really, really fun. Um, you always get a unique bait. No two are alike. It, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like fudge. When, when you have like white fudge or white chocolate drizzled with, with uh, a dark chocolate or a dark fudge. Yeah, so the fish think that they're getting a nice chocolatey treat whenever they bite something like that. So um, <clears throat> it's literally as simple as drizzling black plastic, or you could do the inverse. You know, you could take a really um, sort of a, a really rich light color, like a white pearl or something like that, and drizzle it over a darker background. So um, anyway, we're going to be running the four inch angling AI open pore swim bait mold and the six inch, five, that's seven inch, sorry, six inch uh, angling AI seven, um, open pore swim bait uh, because you got to collect the whole set, right? Um, so anyway, I think we're going we're gonna to try to duplicate that and maybe do a few of them differently um, just to see what we can come up with, but super fun technique. I think you guys will enjoy, so let's get started. Okay, so we have both our four inchers and our six inchers laid out here. And um, this is, is really fun. It, essentially, it is a partial skin pour. So we're just taking black plastic and we're just drizzling it over the molds. And then what we're going to do is to give it sort of a uh, some, sort of some depth and illusion effect. We're going to pour a clear skin layer behind it so the black the black is actually on the very outside of the bait then there's a capsule layer then there's the interior color and so it makes this kind of spider webby black pattern almost look like it's outside of the bait essentially because of the capsule effect so that's how we're doing this today and um we're going to get our first cup of plastic out which is going to be the black and, uh, and then I'll kind of show you how we do this. We're gonna get some plastic on the knife and let's go. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. And you know, the other day I was playing around with it, trying to, trying to almost do a pattern. So like, for example, kind of do that right there. See how that's sort of got a pattern going on. But I, I didn't like that so much, and I liked more of the uh, I liked more of the random, the randomness like that. Now that section right there is a little thick, but that's the beauty of it. It really kind of doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, I haven't done this in the little four inch yet, so let's. Uh, sorry, let me move this over and try to get it, try to get it in better focus. But uh, yeah, do some four inch madness there. Oh, that's super killer. Yeah, so, I mean, pretty much, guys and gals, that's that's it. There's, there's no big secret. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. It doesn't take any skill, necessarily. Just, you know, a little bit of patience. And, uh, you know, because you, you do have to clean up your edges. Um, but, like I was saying earlier, we're going to pour a clear capsule over this. And that will kind of lock in all of these lines um, and sort of hold everything in place while the molds are closed on the heat griddle and during the pouring process. Um, so 
what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, uh, like I always do, I'm gonna finish drizzling. <laughs> I guess that's what this technique is now called. This is the drizzle method. So I'm gonna finish drizzling the rest of my molds here. Um, and then we'll meet you back when they're done. Okay, so we, <laughs> we have all the molds drizzled. They are looking nice and random. And you can see I haven't cleaned up the edges yet, right? Lots of spillover. Well, I want to get that capsule layer down because there again, it's also a protective thing. So once, once that skin clear capsule is down, it will kind of hold all this stuff in place. And that makes it a little easier for me to then rip off the, the edges without pulling things out of place, so to speak. So that's the next step. We've got our craw tube plastic going back in the microwave and um, we're just gonna run it clear. And uh, we'll show you that real quick and then we'll demonstrate cleaning up the molds again real fast. Um, and then we'll get them on the heat griddle. All right, so here we go. And uh, you guys have seen me do this a lot, but this is just a simple comprehensive skin layer, okay? I want to try to get as much of that black pattern up under this capsule as possible. That way it's kind of, quote, protected by it, okay? So that whole thing, you know, a lot of times when I pour a skin layer, it's, you know, maybe just a, a center line or, or in the center and then it kind of goes towards the bottom. This one, this one is a true capsule, okay? It's, it's not really, it's, it is skin pouring, but its function is a capsule that encapsulates the entire side of the bait, okay? Difference between skin pouring and capsuling, at, at least, at least in, in my mind. So anyway, there you go. That's it. You know, one, one thing, well, so there's actually two things that I like ab about, about pouring the skin capsule. Number one, um, it like I said, it, it kind of locks in the black detail or the black squiggle. So now you can see how easy it is to clean up this edge, right? And I'm not dislodging any of, any of the squiggles. So this big piece right here, I can just pull that off, okay? You can see that right there. Oops, just pinch it off. And you can see that that capsule moved but it snapped back into place. It kind of protected um, all the detail there. And so you just kind of run your thumb over it. All right, and there you go. That one is cleaned up and done. I had a few spillover pieces right there. Normally I, I would do this a little bit differently, sort of away from all the other molds. But that's it, nice and clean, one, one little piece left right there okay clean from all sides so that's the next step we're gonna capsule the rest of these and we're gonna get them cleaned up and then uh, got to get them hot the key to something like this is to get them super hot that way all of these layers and skins and detail really melt into the body of the bait Now we are ready to actually uh, build the color. Now these, of course, you can do them as laminates. You can pour wh however intricate of a, of a pour underneath it. Um, I just chose to do them solid um, just so that you would really focus on the drizzle effect and not be looking at what's under it. Um, so we're using one of the new Dead on Paragon colors. This is Beauregard which I believe is named after that little brat girl from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because she turns violet purple or something. I don't know. Anyway, super cool stuff. So we're just going to add some of that. And uh, it's a beautiful violet uh, purple highlight is what the stuff is. Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. All right. And that is what we did. Um, 
Now, we're going to do a few things though. I'm not going to pour all, all of the baits in this. So we're going to do half this and then half another color. Um, just so that we can see what it looks like in a few options. Okay, so we're going to do three. Okay, so the top three we're going to do in the uh, Beauregard Brat Child color. And the key here, obviously, with any hand pour in aluminum is heat. So I have the molds pretty hot. And especially when you're pouring a large bait like this six inch, all in one solid color, anyone who's ever hand poured before knows that the plastic likes to shrink in, right? And you'll have like a little divot in a valley on the top of your bait. The key to avoiding that is to pour it in a hot mold. That way that plastic doesn't cool fast and shrink. So the key is for the mold to be so hot that the plastic cools very slowly. And then you will not have those divot problems. You won't have it in the tail and you won't have it up there in the body of the bait. And of course you will have a strong bait that is bonded together um, you know, that capsule layer and those black lines will all just kind of become one with the bait. And they're not going to pull off the, the sides of the bait. So the last thing you want to do is have a bait where some of that detail, some of that drizzle actually separates from the bait. Okay, so that's the key here is just, just pour super duper duper hot, okay? So anyway, these first three cavities we're gonna do in this color, and then we're also gonna go hit two of the four inchers in this color. And just real quick, um, whenever whenever I'm doing skin pours or layers or any, any sort of layered pouring where I need a lot of things to bond together, I know the mold is hot enough when I can do this. When I can spit on it and it boils right off. That way I know that um, it's going to melt all these things together, a nice strong bait with no cold cracks. So uh, if you have bought baits from me, chances are I probably spit on them at some point. Okay, you guys know me. You know I had to try some color shift. ZTG, I'm about out of this stuff. I got to order up some more. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I wanted to try a color that wasn't like based on white. So um, that violet highlight stuff, even though it's got a lot of purple in it and pink, it's, it's still based on white. So this will be, this will be a little bit darker. This is a blue to green hyper shift. And um, so there won't be quite the contrast, but that's kind of what I'm hoping for is that it will look super cool um, with the shifting color with that black squiggly pattern over it. So, yeah. And because I want that black to stand out, you'll notice I'm not um, black basing this color shift. I'm just adding the powder straight to the plastic. That way it still has somewhat of a see-through effect, but, but it's not dark so that we'll get good contrast. That's the plan. So, anyway, we're going to get this stuff scalding hot and pour the final round and then hopefully we'll have some bonus baits after this if i can pull it off all right time to pour these last three let's go <laughs> have this stuff super hot so hopefully it fills in you know whenever you have these uh, layers poured it kind of restricts the flow of plastic back there in the tail so again heat is your friend to get everything to fill in nice and even. Oh guys, I can tell these are gonna be freaking bomb. Especially with that capsule layer on there, just giving it that extra little illusion effect, plus the illusion of the color shift and the black squiggle lines. These may be our greatest creation yet. All right. Boom. I'm uh, excited to see these, to say the least. 
All right, let's fill in the rest. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the four inchers and um, we'll meet you back when these are done. Okay, and what kind of teacher would I be if I didn't also demonstrate that you can do this with an injection mold? Now, this is a very extreme example of this. This is my big nine inch ribbon tail. Not an easy mold to do this with, but we're gonna try it. So I have the mold hot. I have some very hot plastic and we're going to inject it slow and steady. I wanna inject it slow so that it doesn't dislodge too many of my squigglies, which it probably still will anyway. But the mold is hot, that way everything should uh, bond together and we're just gonna hold some nice pressure there. And this is just straight green highlight for the color. So I have no idea if this is going to work, but hopefully it will have zip wrapper effect because I spent a lot of time picking all the squigglies out of this dang worm. Okay, here we go. Let's get out one of the um, pink ones here. So quick drum roll, please. Let's see how we did. These should be ready to open their, uh, uh, you know what, hold on. Not quite ready yet and I don't wanna pull it in half. So, stay tuned. Okay, it took a little bit of finagling to get the uh, mold in half, but there it is. So, let's compare it with one from yesterday and there you have it. Two peas in a pod and uh, super, super fun stuff. So, let's actually take it out. Looks like I got the molds a little hot. I had a little bit of flashing down there. Um, but, you know, I, I really let these sit on the griddle for a long time so that everything would bond together. And uh, sometimes you get a little flashing around your hook slot inserts. All right, guys, and here's one of the four inchers in that same color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at all the overflow there embarrassing but let's just kind of yank some of that off real quick look at how the actual bait turned out and here's a swatted swatted version of it super cool so anyway we're gonna work on getting these out and cleaned up and um, and then we're gonna uh, go over to the uh, green color shift and see how those did all right, now let's take a look at one of the uh, green color shift. Let's see if I can get it uh, open there. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> Is that not sweet? There's, there's so much illusion going on because you have the, the color shift inside the bait with the swirl on the outside of the bait you know there's a capsule layer in between it super cool yeah here's a good look at it guys look at that <laughs> that is just wicked cool no matter what angle you look at it you're just yeah this is some serious cool stuff I'm glad I randomly did this the other day. Okay, and now let's look at the four inch version of the uh, little one there. Oh. Yep. oh my gosh, it looks even better. Look at that. Just gotta clean it up a bit. So like I've done before, I like to just take scissors and just run them along that edge. And that cleans it up like that. All right, let's take it these bonus worms. Here we go, drum roll please. All right, let's see what happened, if anything. Oh wow, look at that, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. That is freaking wild. Hold on. A little bit of flashing to tend to. 
which uh, which I kind of kind of expected. But uh, you guys, look at those. <laughs> yeah, once I get those uh, once I get those cleaned up a bit, <laughs> is that not freaking cool? Yeah, let's uh, zoom in and zoom out. Oh my gosh. Pretty neat stuff, you guys. Pretty neat stuff. Think more when it comes to your injection molds. Okay, everybody, so here is the spread. Um, so we're gonna attach some eyes. The little ones over here are gonna get black eyes. These are gonna get my logo eyes, just like uh, the ones I did before. These are gonna get some really cool gold um, reptile eyes, and then these are gonna get those gold eyes. So kind of dark eyes over here, gold eyes over here. And um, I'm not gonna show the process. You basically just uh, squeeze some Loctite gel into the eye socket and place the eye on. Um, I have a lot of videos where I show this process, but I wanna go ahead and get these done. And then we're gonna lay these out with the worms and uh, take a look at what we did. All right, guys, how about that for a spread? Got a nice little thunderstorm rolling in, but uh, let's zoom in there. I mean, look, look at how cool that is. And uh, again, just for reference, here's the one, one of the ones from yesterday. So, yep, same exact thing, same exact color, same exact technique. And um, <clears throat> boy, I tell you, <clears throat> sorry the throat clear in here the green ones over here are absolutely masterful you can see a little bit of the color shift effect there um, I really like the uh, the eyeballs the, the gold eyes I just I think it has nice contrast yeah super happy with those and uh, the worms I mean <laughs> I've never made worms that looked anything like that that was a pain to try to trim all the little black squiggles off the sides of that worm in an injection mold. This is definitely a much easier technique um, for open pouring, but I just wanted to show, hey, it doesn't all have to be about swim baits. You can do crazy stuff like this pretty much in any mold. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. It's a fun technique and uh, you can really let your imagination go with it. Okay, well, I am done with today's video. That was uh, actually a lot of work, so, uh, but, but super fun. Um, I, I tell you, I wish it was easier to do in the injection worm. Um, if I ever score a uh, aluminum hand pour worm, you'll definitely see me doing that some more, but super cool, and I think... I think it's not near as cool if you skip the capsule step. Um, just the, the depth and illusion um, just, I think, really makes the drizzle pop. Um, it, it doesn't look painted on um, so much. It, it looks, I mean, it, it literally looks poured. And the illusion to me and, and, the, and the depth and the angles um, is, what, is what really sets it off. So super cool stuff. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm probably not the first one to ever do that. I'm sure Brad Hardy did it a long time ago. He's uh, he's the mastermind of crazy uh, patterns like that. Um, but uh, that's just something that I did the other day, um, and it worked out. So uh, sometimes you just come up with something neat, and and it and it actually turns into something cool that you can then expand on. So that's enough blabber. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please shoot me comments down below. Which one did you like better? Did you like the uh, the the pink the the pink kind of violet ones? Did you like the uh, green color shift ones, or did you like the uh, worms? So um, I'm curious to know uh, which ones you guys preferred. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.